With less than three months left in President Joe Biden's term, it's unlikely that he will achieve any kind of meaningful Supreme Court reform. But a recent poll released by Emerson College underscores just how unpopular the court is and why reform may not be a fleeting dream. Consider the following numbers. Only 34 percent give the court a positive approval rating. 60 percent believe that there should be an age limit to serve on the Supreme Court while 58 percent support introducing term limits. And 71 percent believe that Supreme Court justices should be held to the same ethical standards as all other federal judges. Nevertheless, and despite these overwhelming numbers, the United States Supreme Court currently maintains lifetime appointments with no enforceable ethics code. Joining us now is Tom Rogers, a current editor at large at Newsweek and the founder of CNBC and of MSNBC. Tom, it's good to see you here on the Katie Fang Show. Look, a striking observation from this Emerson College poll for me is that 54 percent believe that the justices reflect the politics of the president who appointed them. As we are on the eve of the most consequential election in at least my lifetime, how much is truly at stake, especially if the next president could appoint maybe two more SCOTUS justices? Well, Katie, great to be with you. I love how you tackle legal issues. Uh, I think that part of the strong uh, disapproval of the court's performance comes from the fact that, uh, as you last pointed to, with the 54 percent believing the court reflects the politics of the uh, president that appoints them, uh, that instead of the Supreme Court being an independent body making decisions that are soundly based on reasonable legal judgments, it's become highly politicized. And you couple that with public perception that the court is highly ethics challenged and totally out of step on two of the most important social issues that the country confronts, abortion and gun control. And you really have a formula for seeing how uh, the president of the United States appointment of justices can totally shape the politics of our, some of our most important issues. You know, Tom, what I also liked about this poll, it actually dove deeper than just figuring out what's your opinion on the Supreme Court. It explored some of the most significant opinions that have come out from SCOTUS recently, like the presidential immunity ruling. I was marveling at the gender divides that I saw here. Only 27 percent of women approved of the immunity decision, while 44 percent of men gave their approval for that immunity ruling. What does that say about how women are viewing SCOTUS and also viewing the idea of giving so much power to one individual who historically has only been a man. Right. Well, we're seeing great gender divide when it comes to perception of the courts, just as we are generally in, in, politically. Uh, when you look at the numbers, uh, Harris versus Trump, massive gender divide in terms of where support lies. And uh, while you see broad uh, support for certain ways of changing the composition of the court, term limits in particular, and limiting a Supreme Court justice's active term to 18 years, um, you really see the gender divide even greater when it comes to more uh, radical ways of changing the composition of the court, namely expanding the court by four justices. And there uh, you see women uh, very much supporting that if it would o help overturn uh, Supreme Court decisions on abortion and gun control while, while men oppose a expansion of the court. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to ask you a little bit more about that. A majority of the respondents on this poll opposed expansion of the court to 13 justices. But when you just frame it like you just did, when you framed the question of expansion in terms of hot button issues like abortion and gun control, more than two thirds of Democrats actually ended up supporting expansion of the court. So let's let's be clear here, Tom. Seems like term limits are good, but court expansion isn't unless you present it through the lens of a hot button topic. Yeah, I think there's something to that, that reform is more popular if it's not tied to a specific uh, issue or outcome. Um, uh, certainly, you, you'd have to read the results of broader reform for term limits than for uh, increasing the, uh, uh, the number of justices on the court. Uh, but women understand that if you really near term are going to affect change on the abortion issue, 
there's really very little ability to do that by changing term limits. That could take a full generation to change the composition of the court. The average uh, number of years that a Supreme Court justice used to serve from 1790 to 1970 was 15 years. From 1970 on, the average term of a justice is 26 years. It's going to take a long time for the composition of the court to change. By appointing four new justices, say if uh, Kamala Harris uh, won and held the Senate, meaning even if it's a 50-50 Senate with Waltz as vice president, you could end up with the ability to appoint four new justices. And that really seems to be the only near-term way you could affect that Supreme Court decision. Unbelievable. I love this conversation. Tom Rogers, you're going to have to come back so we can continue to explore what you find from this poll. And I appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me.